Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, back with the video and this time we're going to learn, uh, it's going to be on GNU Radio Companion and uh, we're going to look at complex signals. So we're going to try to understand what complex signals are uh, with respect to GNU Radio. We're going to look at a simulation uh, which will be based on GNU Radio. Um, so let's just do a prerequisite and let's try to get a basic idea about complex signals. So most of the signals that we see, they are basically a complex signal, which means uh, they are composed of sinusoidal components, sinusoid and cosine. According to Fourier, all the complex signals can be broken down into a sine and cosine components. And we came to know because Fourier was, uh, that was based on Euler's identity, as we know, is this. So this is basically Euler's formula where, where you have e to the j pi or i pi is equals to, or i theta. There are different version of it. They use different nomenclature for it. But the idea is same that it's composed of both kind cosine and sine components. So any signal that you see, it can be easily decomposed according to Fourier is decomposed into cosine and sinusoidal components. So basically a complex signal is a combination of co cosine and sine signals. And your sine signal is basically your imaginary signal. All right, so your sine, according to Euler's formula, is actually a, because it has an ima imaginary symbol or J in engineering and in mathematics is generally I, is basically a, a, a complex or a imaginary signal. So we're going to look at this, and um, and and uh, since once we know what complex signals are, uh, because all the signals just follow the same thing, and this is what we're going to look at in GNU Radio Companion. So so the idea is this. Uh, so in Wikipedia, I found this amazing picture of uh, cosine, uh, cosine and sine signal. So if this is my unit circle, if you look at closely, if this is my unit circle, so this this line, which let's just call it an x-axis, this is going to be your uh, cosine signal. This is going to be your cosine. This is where your cosine will be. And these lines that you're seeing right now, which is, which is moving around uh, in, 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 in a vertical direction, this is going to be your Q. So basically, you have I and Q signals. Uh, we can easily look at this in uh, in constellation diagrams, uh, specifically when it comes to uh, digital modulation schemes, like for example, starting from PSK and all the way up to a different version of PSK, including QAM as well. So the idea is, so in phase, so cosine is basically your x-axis, sine is basically your uh, y-axis, and sine, according to Euler's formula, is actually your imaginary signal, and cosine is actually a real part of a signal as per Euler's identity. So let's let's just simulate this uh, simulation that we are seeing right now uh, in Wikimedia uh, and using our flow graph. So how am I achieving this? So as you know, in GNU Radio, uh, you have complex signal. So anything that is in blue, that is basically a complex signal. All right, so first I'm just visualizing my original signal, which is a cosine assorted signal that is a combination of a complex signal that is in blue. So that is blue. That is going into a throttle block, and this, the output is going to my GUI time sync. So first we're going to visualize my actual signal, this, which is just a complex signal. Now the next thing is this. Uh, I want to get this feeling that I want to see, I want to move this unit circle just like it's moving it. I want to see that movement in I and Q. So that's why uh, it's going into a block called interleave block. All right. So what basically interleave block is, it actually takes, so if, if it's an interleave it has two inputs, what it does, it takes samples of the first input and then it takes, let's say, first two samples of the first input this and then the second two samples of the second input and so on so it will back and forth it will start taking input samples that is coming into the input of your interleaver uh, and it will start taking the input of the signals that is coming in from my uh, signal source which is a cosine and then then i'll have some null source basically it's just nothing but zero 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 because i need to have two input what it will give me it will give me that visualization that i want which looks something like this, where you have 
your I and Q signal moving along, and then you will have a combination of both of this uh, complex signal, which is going to be made up of cosine and sine signal. I hope you're getting it. Uh, le let's just first visualize this, uh, and then I'll come back to it uh, anyhow. So what, so what does this interleave do? So here is the GNU uh, Wikipedia for it. Uh, let's say you have an interleaver, and uh, you have two inputs. If you look at it closely, I have input that is 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's say I have some vector source, some values, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 10, 11, 12, and 13. So what did this interleaver do? I Why am I using an interleaver? Because I want to show that variation in I and Q signals that you are seeing in this unit circle. All right. So, so for that reason, so what it does, it's going to take, now check this out. What the output of an interleaver is going to be is going to be a sample of the first one, first two sample, and then after that will take 10, 11, then it will take uh, second and third sample, and then it will take 12 and 13 sample. This is how it will move around. And this is the kind of an output you will see. So the interleaver block will take two samples from one input, and then it will alternatively take two samples for the next input and back and forth. So this is exactly what it's doing because I need that to draw a picture that I want to draw uh, uh, using uh, uh, GNU Radio. So 0, 1, 10, 11, 2, 3, 12, 13, and so on. So this is what you're visualizing. So this is that's, that's why I needed that interleaver block. Um, uh, so let me just go to my GNU Radio. So this is what it's doing. Now this is going into a constellation block. Of course, I want to see that in a constellation because this visualization it's basically based on constellation diagram. So this is actually a constellation diagram where you have 0 to 360 phases. You have an I, which is your in phase. That is depiction of cosine. And then the vertical signal is actually a depiction of your sine signal. So, so this is going to be a constellation diagram. Exactly the same thing is being done here, uh, 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 right here. So that's that's this part. Let me, let me just explain this, what's going on here. Now... Now the next is this. Now the same signal going out from a throttle block, going into a complex to float graph. This is where I'm seeing that I and Q part. All right. Individually, I will visualize my I and Q part. So this input going out from a throttle block, going out from a throttle block, going into a complex to float graph. Now you have real and imaginary. So you have another float to complex block that is going into a real part. Real part is becoming your I part. And then this imaginary part, and then this imaginary part is going to a flow to complex uh, real plot. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, this imaginary part is going to another block, which is flow to complex as an imaginary block. And then I've been putting a null source as being a real signal. Now the output of this, the Q part is going into your frequency sync. The output of this part is also going into your frequency sync. All right. And then you will also have another another um, interleave block with a null source. See, these interleave blocks that I need, I'm just doing it so I can see the change in my in my angle. Just like I'm seeing it here, I need to see that change. That's why I'm using these interleave block. Otherwise, if I remove it, that's just perfectly fine. So let me just, let me just show you the output of this. Uh, let me just run this. Now check this out. Okay, here we go. So now let me just stop this. Okay, so this is going to be a real plot. All right, guys. Let me just open this up. All right, so if I were to let me just start this. So here we go. So because you, you're seeing this change that continuously moving this. Um, that's why I need those interleave blocks because I want samples to be taken. So it should be able to plot two samples from this side, two samples from this. So right here. So it should be taking two samples in. It should be plotting a null, two, two zeros, and then two samples which are coming in from my complex block. Same thing, two samples of my real block. So you will see that line continuously moving. That's why I needed that. I hope I'm making an... That's why I needed that because I need to plot these individual lines for real, for for I, for Q, and for a combination of all three, which is in blue. 
So that's why I need these interleave blocks. So because I want to see a change with respect to whatever is coming in, then I and then Q, all of this, because this is what the Q is being fed and this is what is being interleaved. So the change in line is being done through interleave block. That, that, that continuously changing moving line that you're seeing on your flow graph, on the output of your flow graph. So now, now if you were to look at it, let me just stop this. So complex is actually going to be a combination of your eye, your eye, which is in black or which is in dark blue, whatever that color is. And then this is going to be your imaginary block, which is going to be Q. So you, if I were to start this, this, this movement is done through interleave block. That interleave block is continuously taking two samples and plotting it, two samples, plotting it and so on for both for, for I, for Q and for the blue part. So blue part is actually uh, your your complex signal, which is a combination, which is the addition of your real signal and imaginary signal. So, so and, and I need to plot this on, 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 on constellation diagram. I don't care about the amplitude because the maximum, so in your I and Q, the maximum will go from I and Q. Now, if you were to, the maximum it will go is one in for cos and for sine is going to be one. This is exactly the same representation that you're seeing here because sometime you will have a lesser value in i value sometime you will have a lesser value in q value that's why you're seeing here maximum you can go up to is one and but you will have some intermediate values as well so the change that the, the movement is done through interleave block now you can look at this signal in time domain as well there we go i can zoom in on it or oh, let me just Indeed, you can clearly see that it's actually a combination of your imaginary and real signal. You can also see that in time and frequency domain. So this is going to be your real signal. Com uh, this is the imaginary part. This is the real part. This is that com com combination of both your real and imaginary part. So, and you can just increase the frequency if you want to. Uh, just have a look at it. So that's the basic of all. Uh, complex signals and this is how you can visualize them uh, I hope you're understanding it what I'm trying to say because this is indeed a combination of both your sinusoidal component and your cosinus component I could have just done it but this interleave block I need three of these because I wanted to show you a change in I and Q and your complex signal based on the addition of these two signals uh, there's another flow graph as well because let's look at this uh, here is also a very simple block. Uh, you have a, s a real source that is your cosine signal that is going into a flow to complex block. And you have another source that is at 650 kilo, six, 64, uh, 1 kilohertz, same source. You have a cosine and sine signal. Here is I'm trying to show you this Euler's identity, which is this, that indeed it's a combination of cos plus i, sine of uh, of pi if you have minus in the middle you will have minus uh, that's why I have a subtract block and so if I were to run this flow graph here we go so this is the time domain block so this is just your simple co signal that is coming out from here all right this is your simple co signal now when it goes so you have cos look at this you have your co signal that is being added together and you have your sine signal that is being added together. Look at this. So you have your cos signal that is going into real to complex. You have your sine signal that is going in. And at the end, you're getting your cos plus j sine theta. And this is the output of that. So this is the, the, the red is the output of if I were to have a cos signal and if I were to add cos plus sine uh, plus sine theta this is the output that you will see now you can also visualize this uh, let me just simply disable this and enable this you will be able to see now let me run this flow graph and notice that this blue was behind when you have cos plus j sine theta now the output that you're looking at is not cosine plus j sine theta it's actually minus sine theta because i enable 
to subtract part of this. So that's the basic. I need to understand complex signal better. Why? Because I need them for Fourier analysis, for my signal decomposition, uh, to do X spectral analysis and things like that. I hope this tut tutorial makes sense to you. Um, if you have any questions, uh, just leave it in a comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.